The big issue that they had yesterday, which was then picked up in other media outlets as well, is that I called to ban transgenderism entirely. I made the point that if you want if you want women to have their own bathrooms, if you think women ought to be able to have their own locker rooms and not have to look at gigantic, gross men while little girls are getting changed, if you want any of those things, you have to ban transgenderism entirely. It's not enough to say, well, you have to wait until you're 12 or whatever people are saying now. It has to be the whole thing because if men have the right to behave as women and identify as women for the purposes of public life, then women can't have their own spaces. And we as a society cannot have our own standards and norms, and we're not allowed to live according to reality. We have to live according to the delusions of these troubled people. And I think we the people have a right to reality. And I think women have a right to their own spaces. And so that means you got to ban the thing entirely. And oh my goodness, what these people say. They said that I was calling for the extermination of transgender people. They said I was calling for a genocide against, I said, what? I must have missed that part of my show. When did I, did I say that? I don't, one, I don't know how you could have a genocide of transgender people because genocide refers to genes. It refers to genetics. It refers to biology. And the whole point of transgenderism is that it has nothing to do with biology. That's what the transgender activists say. They say, forget about biological sex. My gender expression doesn't have to have anything to do with my biological sex. Okay, well, then there can't be a genocide. That refers to genetics. But furthermore, nobody's calling to exterminate anybody. Because the other problem with that statement is that transgender people is not a real ontological category. It's not a legitimate category of being. That talentless simpleton that you just heard from is The Daily Wire's third stringer, Michael Knowles, and I guess he's channeling his inner Matt Walsh in order to farm negative engagement and increase his notoriety, but you've got our attention, Michael Knowles. You're a fascist. We now know that. Congratulations. There's nothing really left to say about that. When you are being accused of genocide and you justify said genocide by saying this isn't actually a legitimate group of people, right then and there, that tells you everything that you need to know. He is saying the quiet part loud. This is by far one of the most explicit calls for genocide against the trans community that I have seen yet. And he's going further than Matt Walsh and going further than any other fascist. He's saying you can't possibly do a genocide against this group that isn't legitimate in the first place. That's a textbook justification for genocide. And even though I'm not necessarily surprised by this type of rhetoric. It still is a little bit jarring to see a fascist just come out and say it. Yes, I want to eradicate this group of people from society. Usually they'll use more coded words and they'll skirt around it, give themselves plausible deniability by using dog whistles. But he's just saying that. He justified the genocide against trans people that he wants by saying it's not a legitimate category of being. It's sick, it's twisted, and I am convinced after seeing this clip that he is genuinely deranged and psychopathic. But before we talk about this anymore, one more quick clip from the sick son of a bitch. People said, well, what does it mean to ban transgenderism entirely? Well, it means that we return to the way that American society operated until approximately five minutes ago when we said that men do not have a right to present themselves as women in public life. And women don't have a right to present themselves as men in public life. It's a new phenomenon, therefore it's illegitimate. Okay, I think that he knows that that's not true. We all know at this point in time that that's not true. The difference is that trans people have more visibility. And I think that he knows that if you were to ban transgenderism, that would lead to an increase in suicides for trans people. But he doesn't care. And even if he didn't know any of this, ignorance is no excuse for hate. But what he just said there 
it's not just blatant ignorance. He's being purposefully obtuse because, again, he doesn't think that this group is the legitimate being of people. So because of that, he thinks that any and everything, any form of violence against them is justified. And that right there is genuinely sickening. Now, I think that most people already know that trans people aren't some new phenomenon, but if you're still ignorant, the National Geographic put out a lengthy piece detailing how trans and non-binary people have been documented throughout human history. This includes Gala and Galli priests, a Roman emperor who wore female clothing and requested feminine pronouns, two-spirited people within indigenous groups, and Hijra in South Asia who were non-binary and recognized as a third gender. And it's evident Trans and non-binary people have been around as long as human beings. But denying their history, denying that they've been part of the human experience for as long as we've documented human beings is all part of his justification for genocide. Because if he can get his viewers to think that this is a new phenomenon and transgender people, they just existed like five years ago, well, then that makes them more likely to accept that genocide against them is legitimate and good. And while gender is indeed a social construct, there are biological factors that likely contribute to the likelihood that someone will have gender dysphoria. But don't take it from me. Take it from Dr. Leslie P. Henderson, a professor of physiology and neurobiology at Dartmouth's Geisel School of Medicine, who explains what most people don't know is that our brain is both literally and figuratively our biggest sex organ. The parts of our brain that control behaviors that have to do with sex and things that differ by sex are inquisitely sensitive to hormones hormones and chemicals that can mimic hormones. They also express genes and patterns that differ between males and females. What's more, the factors that regulate these brain regions do so not only during the hormonal rages of puberty, but also early on in our development in humans and other animals. These brain regions are molded to be different from before the time we are born. Once established, many of these changes are permanent. And while we may not fully understand all these early actions, they are key to sex-specific behaviors, sexual preferences, and, just as likely, gender identity. We also know that there are significant differences between cis and transgender individuals in brain structures and the connections between them. These are correlated with differences in behaviors such as processing of positive effects and erotic imagery. There is evidence to suggest that increased levels of gender dysphoria, i.e. the variance between gender identity and chromosomal sex, may result from developmental exposure to abnormal hormone environments, especially increased levels of androgen and XX fetuses that can occur in conditions such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Anecdotally, my neuroscience colleague Ben Barnes has suggested that prenatal exposure to testosterone-like drugs may explain his own transgender identity. In humans, care must always be taken relating correlation to causation. Differences in brain structures may reflect mutual interactions among innate brain processes, express gender roles, and society's response to those actions, but brain differences are biological. Her conclusion? Being transgender is not a choice. And I feel like this is pretty obvious. We already had this debate with gay people, and now we're having it again with trans people for some reason. And I feel like this should be pretty obvious because who would choose to risk rejection from their family and friends all to hop on some sort of I guess, a trend, according to them? Who chooses to be societal outcasts where they're at risk of political persecution and their identities being legislated out of existence every single day? LGBTQ people don't choose to be who they are. It's innate. But none of this even matters. I shouldn't have to educate every single bigoted right-winger just so they understand why being trans is legitimate and fine. The answer is, we shouldn't. But the reason why it's important to explain these things is because when we get to this point where hatred against one group is so vitriolic that we're seeing actual justifications, unambiguous justifications for genocide out in the open, well, that's when we have to push back and educate the people who don't know that this is what's happening. They're already laying the groundwork to justify a genocide against trans people. That's what's happening. And Michael Knowles just gave away the game. But you don't have to understand this to support trans people and their right to exist and express themselves in any way they see fit. All you have to do is mind your own business.
but people like Michael Knowles don't want to mind their own business because they believe that they have the authority to impose their views on everyone else. That is the hallmark of authoritarianism and fascism. But let me leave you with some wise words from my co-host, Olamia Lauren, because I think that she put it best in a recent episode of TLM. It's just, it's a fear mm -hmm. of them not understanding things. And they they make that their entire personality. It, it, it's so, the whole thing is so, I still have trouble to, understanding it. You don't even need to understand it. At the end of the day, most people, listen, in real life, most people barely give a fuck about the people in their life they're supposed to give a fuck about. Mm -hmm. Okay? They, they barely give enough of an important fuck about themselves. You do not need to understand it. How many people in your life you don't understand what the fuck they're doing? Why is it all of a sudden when it comes to gender identity, sexual orientation, all of a sudden, now you need to you feel like you need to have an understanding of what else uh -huh. anybody else is doing. All kind of people walking around with all kind of religions, doing all kind of shit, doing all kind of hobbies. You never feel like you need to understand it. None of you decide you need to have a PhD in religious studies or cultural identities or any of these other things. You don't need to understand it. You simply need to either, you have two choices, respect people when you deal with them or leave them the fuck alone. Just two choices. Just two choices. You don't need to be educated in nothing simply to respect people. That's how it mm -hmm. works, this idea. That inherently, the idea that you feel like other mm -hmm. people owe you an explanation, and they have to convince you, they have to beat you over the head to get you to afford them the same level of of, of rights or civility as everybody else is something steeped in white privilege, white entitlement, racism. That's what that is. Because why do you feel like every other group needs your fucking approval? Why does everybody need to give you a fucking free PhD course and beat it over your head and give you an A you didn't earn for you to decide to be fucking decent? I don't understand half the shit white people doing, but I don't say shit about it. Okay, you don't tell me I don't. I'm not in your business. I'm not asking why you don't want to do it. Were you acting like a beta? Beta! Beta!